So we're ready to go with the letter H. You've got your guide sheet there in front of you, your cheat sheet, right? Let's start talking. There are a couple variations of the letter H. I'm going to start by doing the top curve, and I'm going to hold my pencil at the number four position angle. That's one, two, three, four, which is a little bit flatter angle at start. At the start, when I'm going to go from right to left and then come down to about the 7:30, 8 o'clock position on a clock, then I can go back to a normal position of my innate normal angle of my pencil, which is about three and a half. And draw a straight line all the way to the bottom of the H, and then just a little flick off to the left to get that nice little hook. Now here's one of the variations that happens in the letter H. The second stem, the one to the right, can either be at the same height as the first one or actually more typically a little bit higher. But sometimes it'll depend on where this letter falls in your line of type as to whether you make that taller or regular height. And then the crossbar, again, I'm going to shift my pencil around to the number four position so that it's a little bit of a thinner line and pretty much just a straight line for the center B. Now, there's one other variation of the capital letter H that I, I want you to be aware of. It starts out the same way, holding my pen a little bit more horizontal, bringing the curve down to 7, 30, 8 o'clock, and then this shaft, this stem, instead of going all the way down, it comes down and then curves up to the midpoint. Do you see that? And creates the cross beam of the curve. Let me see. And since I made this one tall, I'll make the second, sh the second shaft or the second stem on this H, I'll make it short. I'll make it normal height. And then kicking out the foot there. Okay, so there's two capital H's. Again, making sure that your verticals are in line with your italics Guidelines. Now, eventually, you'll be able to do these without so many guidelines, but that'll come later with practice. Now, let's talk about the lowercase h. Again, has this flag at the top, a straight stem, and then the arch of the h. Now, you'll notice when I do this part, this going uphill part of the h, I'm actually holding my pen. Again, I'm, sh I'm changing the angle ever so slightly. If you have a hard time with that, start out always holding your pen straight at the, at the three and a half position and keep it that way. But after a little bit of practice, you'll get so you can turn it without too much trouble because we want this line to be very fine. Then you come down and again, kick out that little foot. There you go. Let me go ahead and move already to the felt tip pen so we're getting quite a bit smaller. Part of the reason, by the way, I have you do this double pencil technique is, number one, everybody's got two pencils and rubber bands in their house, so you can get this tool for free. And when you draw your letters large, it's easier. Then when you get small, it gets a little bit more challenging. So let me start using my guidelines here. Again, I'm holding my pen at a number four position, a little bit flatter, bringing the curve down to 738, 730 or 8 o'clock position, and then the vertical stem with a little kick out little hook there for a foot at the bottom second stem starting up higher coming down and again kicking out this way now in this case i don't like the way that stem is just a hook it looks too these are too similar and i don't like them to be exactly so i'm going to make this one into what i call a flag i bring my pen back up there and do it extended just a little bit and to me that's a little friendlier symmetry than if I leave those both the same. I had, I had three corners that were almost identical, and I don't like that. And then the cross beam, again, turning my, my pen so it's a little more horizontal, like a number four position up here to get that cross beam. Now let me do, go ahead and do the, the second variation of the H. Top curve, first stem, and curving around and making the cross beam. Now, you may have noticed that when I was doing this curve here, I was actually pushing the pen, if you will, uphill. You can do that if you can get away with it. Depends on the interaction between your pen and your paper. If you're working on a very textured or paper with a lot of tooth, 
and you're using a, a dip pen like we're going to do in a minute, that may not work. It may just chatter and rattle and not make a nice line, in which case you'll have to do that line. Let me demonstrate real quickly. You'll have to pull your pen on every stroke. In other words, draw the curve this way. Does that make sense? I call this pushing. It's like an uphill stroke. And I call this pulling. That's a downhill stroke. Okay, that's enough. Uh, let's go to the lowercase h. Same thing here. If you can get away with it, you can push the flag at the top of your lowercase h and then draw down the stem. That makes it all one nice movement. But if you're working on a rough paper, you'll have to do that in two strokes. One, two. Does that make sense? And then the, the arch of the h, again, we pay attention to the shape of this V right here. Do you see that little V shape? You want, you want there to be some air in there so that your, your chance recursive breathes and has a light feel about it. I think that's enough with a felt tip pen. Now let's go to the big bad boy of the calligraphy world, the dip pen. And uh, I will dip it in water just to make sure my pen's ready to go. And I always use some piece of scrap paper. A sticky note is good for making sure my pen is behaving itself. There we go. That's pretty good. Let me go up here to an empty area on this page and do the capital H again. The curve. It always feels so nice to, to get to the dip pen because this this part of the line is so much nice, nicer and thinner. Now, I think you can see this, can't you? That my, it, my, my, uh, the incline of my italics on that, on that stem is off. I wasn't paying attention. I was thinking too much about you. <laughs> so I'm going to draw that again, if you don't mind. Get it right this time. A hor it starts out as a horizontal stroke there at the top of the curve. There, let's make sure this is in line with my horizontal, with my uh, italics angle. There it is. Same thing here, parallel to my italics guidelines. Then kick out just a little foot at the bottom and a crossbar at a flatter angle. Let me go ahead and do the variation on the capital H. And I'm going to do this using two strokes. There's one stroke, and then the second stroke this way, and then the crossbar. And I'll make this part of the H normal height, coming down and kicking out a little foot. Okay? Lowercase h with the dip pen. I always, as I said, test. Make sure your pen is behaving the way you want it to. If sometimes it's got too much ink in it, sometimes not enough, sometimes it's acting up and not, not uh, dispensing the ink properly, so I always have a piece of paper there. Let's do the lowercase h, and I can get away with pushing the flag at the top of that. Now down here, again, I want to make sure that I leave just enough space in here to be friendly. <laughs> I want this to be a, a an attractive, winsome typeface. Let me do that again. That H is kind of ragged. Let me do just one more so I'm leaving you on a good note. Oh, that one's even more ragged. Here we go. There we go. That's nice. And a little foot there. And now because my flag is too thin, I'm going to come up here and add to that a little bit. So I hope you don't mind that I leave my mistakes in here rather than creating a stack of outtakes on the, on the cutting room floor so that you can see when I mess up and you do the same thing, you know you're not really doing something wrong. That's just the way it goes. Take a few minutes and practice that H several times until you get it right, and then those lines will be smooth just like you want them to be. Now, what about connecting these letters? Like very predictable, you know that you just kick out the bottom of this H a little bit to, if you need to, to connect to the next letter. What if the letter H is the last, the last letter in a line of type? You have two options. 
you probably know this if you've seen some of the other letters. You can either take the, the foot there and do a simple hook like that, or you can take the flag at the top and extend that in some way. Either one, not both, but either one, your choice. Good luck with that, H. Let's keep going.